On lesson 11, we're going to go over some final remarks on the plans, uh, discuss annotation and printing. If you recall from the beginning, we took the yard ace plan. Here's a picture of the yard ace uh, of the plan and the airplane itself. It's a high wing three channel electric um, RC model airplane. We took the general arrangement of the yard ace, the nose moment, tail moments, wings, etc. Took out the internal structure and came up with the frame for the yard ace. Any, um, Slight modifications we made to this frame, wing tips, extend the wing um, span a little bit, would still keep the same general flying characteristics of the yard ace. So we took that frame, made the wingspan a little bit longer, about four inches longer, a little bit bigger, larger tail surfaces to include the elevator and rudder. Went from a high wing to a low wing, a little bit greater nose and tail moment, and we're going to call that the snapper. And so the whole lessons were filling in this frame with structure for the model itself. In the course of the lessons, we came up with bits and pieces of the snapper. You can see here uh, the wing, the spars. And what we want to do is take that and put it all together for uh, the final plan of the snapper. And here we have an initial look at the final plan for the snapper. So let me enlarge here a little bit. As you do your final plan, you want to make sure that you have enough information so that the builder can see what they need to do to uh, build the airplane. I always like to have both sides of the wings, uh, both halves of the wings. Any unique spars that need to be uh, drawn out. Uh, standard stock items like the 1 8 inch square balsa spar, I don't think there's any need to especially draw that out. Uh, the landing gear needs to be described. Uh, let's zoom in here. I'm going to use the track wheel on the mouse to the um, to the ribs. Here you want to list the ribs both on the wing itself and the individual shapes here. Um, the snapper is fairly simple. There are three types of wings, uh, ribs, W1, W2, and W3 at the end. Here's the uh, type of wood, the numbers that you need to make all listed there. Again, any differences in the size, note that double W1, because of the forward 1 16th inch spar doubler, uh, has a little bit of a cutout here for this. W2 and W3 are the same shape, but W3 is 1 8 inch balsa for strength at the end. I think it's also good to have a um, cross section, a uh, typical cross section of a rib. Here we have a W3, just so you can see where the spars are. Again, a fairly simple design with a snapper, but if you get more complex aircraft, it's good to have this just as a drawing practice. You may have to have uh, more than one if there are unique differences that need to be explained to the builder. Another advantage of TurboCAD um, always is that it's drawn in full size. What I found out was that I made a mistake when I was originally drawing the wing leading edge. Let's go ahead and enlarge just this section. If you recall, I wanted to do it a uh, 1 8 inch square balsa for this wing leading edge. And when I looked at it, I said, hmm, that's probably a little bit bigger than 1 8 inch square. And it's very easy to measure it. We just go up to the um, distance tool and we left click, left click, and um, we can see that it's uh, three tenths of an inch um, uh, uh, distance. So the one eighth inch square is not going to be enough, and uh, even the two eighths inch square is not going to be enough. You're going to have to have three eighths inch to cover the uh, three tenths of an inch in order to uh, make that uh, a big enough balsa for the leading edge, very easy to do in the plan. You just make a different dimension on the plan so that people know when they do the leading edge that they have um, a larger size of balsa that um, one eighth inch will not be uh, adequate. And that might be one quarter inch by one half sanded down, just something big enough to take into account that leading edge. Again, the advantage of seeing it on TurboCAD. Now, as we mentioned, um, everything uh, on the RC model airplane plans or, or, or a model airplane plan, we build full size on the plan. So there's no need to dimension the plan. We don't need to put here, this distance is um, uh, two inches because you're building full size. And we can always check that. For example, we know F1, the fuselage is two inches wide. It's good to double check as you go through the uh, review process or just left click on both sides. And sure enough, that's pretty close to two inches wide for the, um, for the fuselage. But what we do have to do is make appropriate annotations on the plan for what the various parts are, uh, fuselage formers, notes of what type of material, etc. It's good to have consistency on this. I uh, generally use Arial text. Uh, it's 
three tenths of an inch high here for just the remarks, half an inch high when I'm calling out uh, a specific part size, and I underlined it if it's describing a fuselage, side view, um, uh, wing, etc. Again, your option, you just want to be consistent. So let's talk a little bit about how we do these, um, these annotations right here. And again, it's just your judgment as you are drawing the airplane, but you want enough information so the builder can see the sizes on the plan of what to build. And the um, leaders are very easy to do. We just left click on the leader tool. Let me zoom in with the scroll wheel just a little bit. We left click on whatever we want to illuminate. We call this 1 8 inch square balsa. Left click, draw it out long enough. Notice we have to pull it out enough to get the arrowhead and you can move it in various places. So we'll move it over here double left click and there's the arrow right there. We will select it, double click, and we could just type in, um, let me make sure the caps locks are on, just type in test. And uh, we'll OK with that. And, and there's the arrow right there. Um, so it's very easy to use these as much as uh, you want for the drawing. And so we'll just go ahead and get rid of that. We'll zoom out with a track wheel and let's just take one look at a technique. Um, you notice, for example, when the text goes across the rib, I usually cut it out just to make it a little bit clearer. Let's go ahead and do that once just so you can see how that works. Uh, we'll take another leader, we'll left click, and let's just say that we're going to left click here, draw it in, and we'll double click. Go ahead and select, double click, and we'll put um, test note. That should be long enough to do that. And we will select OK. And notice as we zoom in with the track wheel, it goes over these ribs. I don't think that looks good. So what I do, again, is just drawing technique. We'll do the line tool, keep it about the width of the cursor, hold on the shift key to keep it uh, vertical like that. Uh, remember when we trim it, if we trim it, which is what we're going to do, let's zoom in just a little bit. If this is the cutting edge and we left click on that, we lose a whole line. We don't wish to do that. So let's undo that. And what we do is we simply use a split entity tool. Let me click on this. Create a split on the entity. The little X goes away. Now, when we cut with a cutting edge, left click both times, escape, left click, trim, escape. And then with the selection tool, just select, delete, select, delete. You see, I think that looks a little bit cleaner right there. So again, uh, just your option how you put those annotations um, around the model. Now one thing when you're moving all the parts around is the group and explode command. Um, it's very easy. Notice when I click anywhere in this um, uh, stab elevator arrangement, the whole thing moves together because it is grouped. If I want to trim individual parts, it's very easy to do that. I simply go to the explode, click once, and now I can select individual parts, trim whatever. But you'll find when you're moving the whole thing around, once it's finished and on the plan, it's very easy to make it a group. And now anytime we select one part of it, it's very easy to uh, accurately position that just for uh, making it look good um, on the plan. By the same token, you can experiment. Um, I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in with the um, box right here. Notice I've made this a group, so I can move it anywhere I want. To draw the box uh, is very easy. Again, as an example, we just simply draw a rectangle like this. Go to Select, double click on that. Now for the pen, which is a line, we make it just a little bit thicker, maybe half an inch. Click OK, and then you have that for the lines. Again, we'll snap to the middle point, pick a line, and you see you snap to the middle point there, snap there. You can turn off the snaps. We just want a line anywhere. We can draw it, shift to keep it horizontal, and then we go ahead and trim with the rectangle like this. Escape, and there you have um, the box. The text is, uh, we'll zoom in just a little bit, left click test. Uh, there that is right there. If you want it a little bit bigger, just double select with the text and you can make this half an inch if you want. Half an inch, click OK. 
and there is your uh, information right there. Same for um, changing the font if you want to. Remember, if we want to move that, which we probably will, notice that didn't work out too good. We simply undo, go ahead and select the entire object, create a group. Now, anytime we move that, the whole thing moves around. Uh, very easy to do. And we'll get rid of that right now. Delete. Okay, um, so again, it's just your call that you have enough information, landing gear, uh, notice that, um, let me zoom in here, that I thought it was appropriate to do a detail about how the landing gear is sewn to F3 with dental floss and epoxy, just so that's clear to somebody. Uh, the servos are here in the top, uh, angled on F4, and, and everything else just kind of flows into place. It's not an especially complicated model. Um, notice I put a bevel for the uh, the elevator there so it can hinge, uh, apply uh, skid, etc. And I think a rule is always nice in case people uh, want to enlarge it, what, what should the proper size be? Now let's talk just a little bit about printing um, the snapper. Notice that if you try to print on this whole sheet, there's a bunch of stuff on this working sheet. For printing, what I like to do is just go ahead and select our finished plan, you can select the whole thing, and we're going to copy it. We get a new sheet, new from scratch, and we simply paste the entire plan, click outside, so now that we're on a um, new sheet. And for the print, you simply go to print, and you'll see that you have a page set up right here. Notice that right now it's going to print full size, just that little section there. You'll have whatever paper is um, selected in your printer, plotters, etc. Generally speaking, we're going to print this whole thing on one sheet of paper, and so it, this is an important thing. Once we uh, left-click fit, that fits it all under the paper. That's what it's going to look like uh, right there. Notice this ratio right here, 1 to 3.5623. If you copy that down and print out on the sheet of paper, if you enlarge it 356%, that will do a proper enlargement to make the snapper full size as per the scale um, uh, that you have on, on the plan. And remember also for the layout, if you want to um, put uh, pieces of paper together, let's say you wanted to tile to have um, four pe uh, pieces of paper you're going to tape together, once you go to the um, paper here, except the margins here, and you fit that, Notice that it fits onto the four pieces of paper. Let's just make sure. Actually, it added another one there. We'll get rid of that. That is the size right there. And when you go to the paper, um, that is 1 to 1 1.8. So if you enlarge it 180%, uh, that will be full size. That will print out much more accurately. And of course, if you have a, pr a plotter, you can do the, to do the full size printing. So again, that is a view of um, going from essentially a clean sheet of paper, taking a frame, filling it in uh, with um, structure uh, to build the finished plan, and you are complete with the first steps of using TurboCAD to draw your RC model airplane plans. Again, thank you for taking the time through these 11 lessons. A little bit more bonus material on lesson 12. We talk about curves, uh, drawing things like motors and servos, etc. Uh, but this should be a good start for your RC Bondelaire playing plans, and I wish you all the best of luck. Take care.